give Stan Brown a big round of applause, please. So, um, not too loud. Uh, Vic asked us to have a chat about uh, what hospitality operators should expect from their CRM. Um, and we tried to make it fun. Um, so, originally, we thought about how to approach this and decided um, I'm not going to share anything revolutionary today. None of this is rocket science. Um, it's more um, taken from what Angus said uh, earlier in the panel. A lot has changed over the last two years, uh, there's a lot of new technology. Uh, providers can do a lot more, consumers expect different things, and this is more 20 minutes just to say, take a breath. I'm sure almost everyone here uses a CRM currently, so consider what you can now do with CRM, what options are now available to you, what would the people are doing well when they're just doing the basics. Um, and, and basically just look at some ideas of how people that we work with uh, are doing it really well without doing anything too crazy. Uh, also, uh, originally I was supposed to appear with a mystery guest, uh, which is Jack Edge, you can see down there, bottom left. He pulled out on Friday, which left me plenty of time to change the entire presentation, but I thought, I'm going to be really petty and just tweak it slightly, uh, just to mock Jack throughout the entire 20 minutes. So if you spot any mocking of Jack, take photos, send them in the group, ruin his day. Um, so we've called it, How to Launch a Pizzeria Where No One Knows Your Name. And the reason being is that Rudy's Pizzeria, part of Mission Mars, do some really clever stuff with the basics with their CRM. So the idea was we talk through some examples and some ideas and then hand over to Jack, but I will be Jack today. <laughs> so uh, just for anyone that doesn't know us, what's Airship? So um, we've been going for about 20 years as a business, we're 100% hospitality focused, and we have two platforms, uh, Airship, which is our hospitality CRM, full focus on that today, and we have Toggle, which is basically a gift card platform, but we've created this really nice wanky phrase, Hospitality commerce, we like it, Kelly hates it, um, but yeah, it's worked. And so, Anna and Deck are on there because twice so far this year, people have compared us to Anna and Deck and said, we know we like you, we just don't know which one's which. We, so, Airship is the CRM, which we didn't realise. So, today's all about Airship. 100% um, hospitality focus, we work with over 500 brands, over 5,000 locations all in the UK. Um, we sent 240 million emails per year through the platform and rising. So, I'm not a marketer, I've never been an operator, I've got no right to tell anyone how to do their email marketing. I'm a pretty terrible marketer, to be honest. Um, but we work with some really, really cool brands and some phenomenal marketing directors and digital teams and marketing execs. So, I'm just basically stealing their ideas, regurgitating it and letting you take them back to your own businesses. So, this is really important. I'm sure you've all got your own CRMs, including Airship, a CRM is only as powerful as the data it collects. So if we didn't have all these great integrations and all these great other suppliers, like the other sponsors today didn't exist, uh, like Wilder Social, like Feed It Back, like Stalking, like Toggle, like Mr. Young, like so many other people in the room, uh, we'd be, well, shit, there'd be no use for our platform because it'd just be an empty platform. Um, so we tried to break down where we're getting all of our data from currently, uh, and you can see all the different inputs there in that wheel. Um, one thing that's interesting, which is a big change in uh, CRM recently, is that everything from photo booth down at the bottom right, all the way around to pay at table, uh, is something that's been mentioned today, which is a pop, as we call it, or a proof of presence. It's an indicator that person's in your venue. Uh, and that's really important nowadays with CRM. So I'm gonna go through uh, why that's important. Put the photo of the uh, photo booth, because I can't quite believe how much data they collect. There's one downstairs, it's pretty insane. Uh, speak to Jack, who was here, about how much they collect through theirs at Albert Schloss. It's mental. So, here's your first opportunity to mock Jack. So, this is the consideration that I want everyone to kind of take away from this, if nothing else, is now we've come out of lockdowns, all this new technology exists, you've got your CRM. I would wager that most people in this room have, or, or should have, the ability to know this level of information on the right about their customers. This is Jack Edge, he's male. 36 years old, not true. Um, 30 days into his birthday, last visit four days ago, and all this information you see, seven bookings all time, left two bits of feedback, he's viewed uh, offers, he's uh, connected to the Wi-Fi 34 times. But down here you can see, this is information I imagine most of you could get into your CRM now. 
So uh, if you spend £387 at the start of the year, if it's about once a month, has a booking coming up, <laughs> normally books a table for one. Uh, <laughs> please send this to me, please. Um, he left an NPS feedback score of eight last month. He would like to suppress Valentine's Day communications. It's a tough time of year for Jack. <laughs> Uh, most commonly visit Sheffield, redeemed a free coffee voucher two days ago, generally booked three weeks in advance, has 208 loyalty points, has £50 on a gift card, is a meat eater, and orders the Hawaiian pizza. Um, so, all this and more. And if you have a think about all the different suppliers you've got and different data inputs, and I know this is what a bit lives and breathes every day, you could have a more complete picture of your customers than you probably know already without changing anything. So, it takes us on to kind of what the new standard should be, and this is what we talk to a lot of our airship customers about, is that you don't need to change anything massive. So what should you expect from your CRM provider? Because this isn't an airship pitch, there's some other fantastic CRM providers in this sector, you've got a, you know, a great series of options, and really, it doesn't matter which one you choose, apart from that second one, that integrations, I'd advise everyone to choose their CRM integrations first. If airship doesn't integrate with the other tech providers that are most important to your business, then we're the wrong choices, that makes sense. But I'll run through these. So these are the five things we think you should be expecting from your CRM, and you should probably be expecting from yourself to put in place as the basis before you get into other grander ideas. So one is, you've now got the ability to track visit data. Uh, a lot of people have spoken about this, but a CRM used to be a wonderful bucket, someone said a bag before, yeah? <laughs> a wonderful uh, bucket of email addresses that have opted into marketing, GDPR, client of course um, and you just send a newsletter to it or a weekly update on what's happening and there's a, a fate on the poor board there's a new uh, curry night being launched they just be uh, kind of a, a newsletter a shout out but now if someone logs onto the wi-fi or picks up by presence or they leave feedback or they leave a gift card or they use the order and pay or they book a table and they turn up or they use a voucher or so many other things they'll leave off they get in the photo booth and leave their email address they're leaving a pop a proof of presence and your CRM should be tallying how many times that person has left a pop. So I should be able to say, oh, where's Dan Hawkey? I just want to give him shit for that photo. Hi, Dan. So you should be, <laughs> on your phone, how rude. Um, you should be able to tell how many times Dan's been to a venue over a period of three months, which day, what time. And you should be able to use that to make decisions on how you market to him. Um, integrations is the most important part of this. So at this point now, you should be demanding that your CRM partner integrate with all of your important other partners. Or if they're not going to do it, you go with a different CRM. Or if you've got a current provider and they won't integrate, the times have gone now. People can't be saying, we'll just create everything on our own. No one person can create the perfect ecosystem. There's too many great providers out there running away with their solutions. So it's a case of saying, okay, you've got to integrate with who's important to me, otherwise I'm going to leave. And that's the same for Airship. If we ever say, we can't integrate with your ticket system, but you are a ticket-based company, we just can't do it, you should leave Airship. And it has to be that kind of ruthless now because there's too much opportunity if you've got an ecosystem that all speaks to each other. And there's a lot of things happened in the last two years where people rolled out technology quickly during lockdown because you just had to, it was chaos. People have moved jobs, you've inherited people's previous systems that you're not familiar with or you don't like or don't integrate with the system that you like. You've just got to get pretty ruthless and say, you have to integrate, otherwise I'm going to move on. We can do it, we're tech providers, it's what we do for a living, we're just quite lazy sometimes, so you've got to push us. Um, automation's massive, and this is probably the biggest thing that we've discovered uh, over the last few years at Airship, which is, if you can get your automated marketing right from your CRM, I mean, Dan made a very bold claim to a pub group two years ago and said, I will bet you your subscription cost that I can pay for Airship five times over with one email, one automatic email, and very luckily it worked. Um, and they released a case study yesterday, and I'll talk about them in a second. But from one automated email, they paid for their airship subscription five times over. And all, all CRMs should be able to do this. It's not, it's not rocket science. Um, Personalisation is massive as well. The number of times we've had complaints or people complaining that they've had to go and build 12 different emails to send out because they've got 12 different venues or 12 different customer pods. Your CRM should allow you to create one email that you send to a group of people and it pulls in the venue they visit most often or the offer that's relevant for them based on the form that they've filled in, saying I'm a meat eater or I'm a vegetarian or I like, like pineapple on pizza. Um, it should be something that comes as standard now. So you've got to expect these things because it's available. Um, and then finally, tracking results, which is something that a lot of people have spoken about, is your CRM now, because of all these amazing integrations that they should have,
can track results, can give you these KPIs that Anne speaks about. So if you send an email, uh, or you do a, a text message campaign, or you do a, a you pull the data down to do a social campaign, you know who's received it, you can get all sorts of metrics on who's opened it, who clicked, but you can now also say, well, did that person book a table? Because I can see it in my table booking system, which then feeds back into your CRM. Or did they ping off the Wi-Fi? Did they redeem a gift card? Did they use the order and pay app in venue? You know that they came back in. It's all there in your CRM if you're using it properly. So you can do you know, split test campaigns and say, okay, those people that got the marketing email visited on average 1.4 times more than those that didn't. And you can take that to the board meeting and say, look, it works. It's available. So you've just got to expect it now, because if not, you need to change. Um, this is what we should be. Dan is on a beach somewhere in Lanzarote wearing an all-inclusive wristband, and I'm very jealous. Um, but he couldn't miss today. He sends his apologies. Um, this is what we believe at Airship you should be aiming for. Again, we've got no right to tell you this. We're not operators and we're not marketers. Um, but looking at all of our 500 brands that we work with, 240 million emails that go out, we find that the people who have the most success are the ones who send around 100 automated emails per year. That's two per week to everyone. Which I think a few people we speak to say that sounds like a lot if it's automated and it's going all the time. But if you think about people like Netflix or the e-commerce brands that you work with, your inbox is getting at least two a week from them. And I mean, this is just our opinion from what we can see metrics in that time is a lot later than I thought. I'm not going to finish in eight minutes. Um, People aren't unsubscribing anymore. They are in small numbers, but they're just archiving or deleting, they're just swiping. We, the way we use our phones now or our, our laptops, we're not unsubscribing, we don't have time, we think we're too busy, so we just delete them. So if it's not of interest, they move on. If it is, they'll engage with it, they'll go through, they'll, they'll absorb the information. So um, this is what we should be aiming for, we believe. On the right is not even the full customer journey, but um, we did some work with a wonderful lady that helped most people here know called Annika who can't be here because Kobe got her finally. Oh, God. Yeah, she sent a picture from my death up with the data hook top on, yeah. Um, we work with Annika and Punky at Rose's Tie to create this automated customer journey on the right, and Punky's been kind enough to let us show the skeleton of it on every single customer conversation we've had since that day. And this isn't even all of her automated journey, that's simply her welcome journey, her birthday journey, and her retention journey. And each one of those little yellow, beige, uh, orange boxes, that's an automated email. And depending on how that person behaves after they receive it, or between the next email being sent, their journey changes. So if they get the email saying, thanks for visiting for your first time, click here to get a, um, a voucher for your next visit. If they click it, or they don't, or they redeem it, or they don't, they get a different email next time, or a different text message, or they find themselves in a different social media form. Um, birthday journey is the same, it can send out different emails based on which birthday it is or how loyal they are, how many times they've visited, it can suppress birthday emails if your booking system tells us they're already booked in, don't give them a discount or a free bottle of Prosecco if they're already coming, you don't need to. And it goes on, and we can go through this all day, we adore this, but it's really simple. Your CRM partner, give them a call, tell them you want to do this in the space of a week and they will help you build it. They've all got the technology to do it. Um, if you want, you can get your phones out and scan that QR code because we created a fictional venue called Joiner's Kitchen. Uh, it's not real, it's a pub. Um, and we created what we think is a pretty perfect email journey as well, which you'll receive over the period of about 14 days. So it's a sped up uh, example of how the automated journey can look, and depending on how you interact with it, you'll get different emails. Um, but this is things like welcome, birthday, loyalty, reward, post, visit, lapsed, and retention. You should have an automated journey that took to boxes, we believe. So here's a few examples of people who've done it really well, because again, don't just trust me. Um, Roses have got a really nice automated journey where they spoke to us and said we're losing a lot of business through uh, Deliveroo, we want to bring them back in direct, we want to drive them in venue, we want to make sure they come to us directly rather than paying the fees. So quite cheaply, uh, if you order a Roses tie from Deliveroo, you'll now see a QR code in the bag. Uh, and this again, all of these are using multiple partners in their ecosystem. You scan the code and it says, if you scan this and leave us some feedback, we'll give you a five pound gift card for your next visit, which can't be spent through delivery, only direct. So people are scanning this, gift, this uh, feedback form, they're leaving their feedback, they're opting in to join the marketing database, they're getting sent a five pound toggle with voucher that has a short redemption period, and they're being pulled back into the venue and then it tells the CRM, did they come in or not? And if they did or they didn't, they go on a different journey. Um, 
that's leading to people going back more directly and they're getting a 58% opt-in rate just from a simple QR code that's going and taking them on this automated journey. The cat and wickets are the gentlemen that um, are the ex cricketers Stuart Rawdon and Harry Gurney. Dan bet them, they were paid for self in one email journey, and it did. Um, so in the first year, their one pub, uh, their birthday journey drove an uplift of £13,000 without them doing anything. It was a birthday journey that had a gift card attached uh, for the value of a bottle of champagne, and the redemption rate was 34%, because they worded it well, they got great loyalty, and they used their CRM properly. Uh, and Tortilla finally used some segmentation to look for people who were visiting their venues or near their venues during weekdays, and I think this is on Valentine's Day, yeah, 14th of Feb. Um, they sent a text message campaign saying two for one burritos today. Loyal customer, come and get two for one. They had a 92% delivery rate because it was a text message, but it was SMS is making a comeback. Um, and they got a 31% click through rate on those SMS. And it was a massive driver of footfall revenue for them on a Monday. So these are just examples, but we could have picked any from hundreds. I mean, this sector is crazy when it comes to innovation and marketing ideas, there's no shortage of it. I think people sometimes think it's harder to put it into action with automation than it actually is. Um, at this point, I'm supposed to hand over to Jack and say, Jack, tell us how you use your ecosystem for great effect, but he's not here. So he left this lovely note. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Um, but I'm going to talk through on his behalf because it's great and it uses a fair few people in this room and it's a really clever way of using uh, CRM. So um, I don't know if anyone's visited Rudy's before. They do some pretty great pizza. Yeah, okay. Uh, so they're a northern company uh, and also share a name with my son. So I love them. I get so much free merch from Rudy's. It's amazing. Um, and they had a plan to give away 10,000 free pizzas because they were opening their Soho location. And they were saying, how do we open our first London location with an absolute bang, get some hype, get people visited in their numbers, get them opted into our database, get them into our welcome journey, our birthday journey, our attention journey, and start taking them on this path. And it was really simple. This is what Jack did, without even telling us, he just went and made it. So first, he used data in the CRM to build a social media lookalike audience. Uh, this is thanks to data from our friends at Wireless Social. I'm sure there's some there. I'm sure they're here. I saw a hand, there we go. Um, so they used data in the CRM through Wireless Social to build a social media audience, which said find our most loyal customers, find the top 10% of people visiting our venues, and then do a social lookalike for Soho. And they ran a social media advert to people who are basically social twins, of their most loyal customers in the north, or Target on Soho. That ad then led to a form set up by Airship. They filled in their details to get a free pizza, it's a pretty attractive proposition. Um, and that then fed them into the Airship database into a holding group. And then we fed 7,000 released to pizza emails over seven hours, which included a link to Res Diary, who they, are, they work with that integrates into their CRM, inviting them to book. So really simple stuff. You know, took no time at all to build this with Jack. The results were within the first 17 minutes, uh, no, yeah, within 17 minutes, the first three days of trade were fully booked. Within two hours, 6,000 pieces had been claimed. 92% of people who claimed the piece had turned up to get it, and it went so well they released another 3,400. They then also, in the automated journeys, set up an automated post visit email, giving them initial lead feedback, and within weeks, Rudy was 26 on TripAdvisor for London. And it, Jack was doing nothing. He was literally sat in Albert Schloss drinking at midday, which is what he just literally does all the time. And in the background, this automated journey is just happening that we built for him, or any of your CRM partners could build for you. And he's getting praised by the bosses because they can track it, they know exactly what revenue is driven for them. Soho was an absolute success, and their database was just filled within you know, three days. It was such a big success. And he now does that for every single one of his new openings. Another slide from Dan. Never <laughs> remember to do a shameless plug. We also have a campaign on. If you want to try uh, either Ash or Toggle, you can get them either of them for free until June. So there you go. Dan will be very happy with me for that. Please tell him I did this. Um, and finally, 37 seconds left. Here we go. Finally, <laughs> finally, come and find at the bar. If you've got any questions about this, we live and breathe it. I know it's a really small part of what you guys do, but CRM literally lives in the middle of everything that's been discussed today, or single customer view, or whatever you want to call it, and it's such an easy thing to get wrong by overcomplicating it in your heads. If there's experts that are building it, just ring them. You know, get on the phone to your CRM provider tomorrow and say, let's talk about automation, let's talk about integrations, and give me some timescales, because it should be really simple. Perfect.